Greetings from the commentators. Yes, I was entranced by that little dance figure that we had <laughs> at the end. This is Frody and Savis bringing you guys the second quarterfinal of the day between Maligos and Gundam Flame. There's lots of fun anecdotes we'd like to share about these players, but first I want to introduce my lovely co-caster. Savis, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. I'm glad to be here again. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the EU Championship was a, was a really cool one. Uh, this time I'm getting to see this EPAC players uh, from, uh, from multiple different countries as well. A lot of interesting deck lists and a uh, yeah. lot of players to really look look out for. Lots of rivalries between countries as well. I you know I don't want to kind of put too much stereotypes into the people's minds, but there is a lot of uh, cutthroat competition between the countries. That who really is number one in Asia Pacific? And people do generally think it's Korea, but Taiwan also highly considers themselves to be on the level of Korea. Which, by the way, they also told me that they think Taiwanese players also think that they're just as good as Europe and America as well. They put them all at the same same level of play. Yeah, they might be. We've seen uh, a lot of interesting deck lists in the previous APAC championships and uh, but speaking of Taiwanese player Malikos uh, here uh, bringing some interesting deck cards in his uh, what otherwise would be a regular deck list including three Harrison Joneses in, uh, yeah. across his uh, five decks. Yeah, I sense a theme coming from Malagos, not just from his namesake, which we'll talk about more too, because um, Malagos did bring a couple of Malagos decks. Uh, we'll start things off with Warlock versus the Dragon Warrior. Now, Zoo Warlock did fall a little bit out of popularity in recent times, uh, you know, dating to last week, but it seemed to make a little bit of a comeback here. What do you think is the current state of the Zoo Warlock? Well, it, it's quite powerful. It was only a couple of days ago that uh, uh, Xiao, I believe, uh, reached rank one legend on the European uh, ranked play, and that's uh, quite an accomplishment. And in, in order to be able to reach the number one spot, you don't only you can't do it just by playing well. The deck list also has to be good, and uh, this is fairly similar list, if not exactly the same one. It's not exactly the same because there is some uh, tech in his in his, in this particular Zoo Warlock. There is a Crazed Alchemist, for example. Mm -hmm. But, but um, yeah, that's you, certainly a powerful deck. You like the versions with the Darkshire Librarians um, in, in it? Because I know some people say, like, maybe you can play Zoo Warlock just with the Imp and the normal set of discards. You don't have to play the full I discard wonder. packages that throws away other hand cards. I do. I, I really do. Uh, there's a lot of synergy with the Multisar Simps, and if your hand is empty, you don't get the discard portion at all. You can also quite often set it up in a way where you only have the, the Silverware Golem in your hand and therefore are guaranteed to get it on the board. The discard effect doesn't matter that much, but it, it's a powerful card in my books. Really to see some unusual cards being played. Uh, Malagos, of course, is going to be going up against the Dragon Warrior, which also didn't see much popularity in the Europe Championships. Uh, however, you did get to know Gundam Flame a little bit better in that cross-cut piece. You saw that Gundam Flame, he... Basically, it's an unabashed, uh, completely bonafide aggro player and loves going <laughs> face. So it doesn't surprise me that when he's bringing Warrior, he's bringing Dragon Variant. Not at all. Here, looking at those three different uh, choices from the Sir Finley Merkleton, I don't really think there's any decision here. Life tap seems like the obvious one. But, uh, you see, what do you think Tron is considering here? Yeah, I mean, I th the other thing to consider is that you're trying to use higher quality oh. minions, and so you use hero power from the priest in order to heal your opponent and get value out of your inevitable four dominant minions. Um, but I was expecting the life tap. That yeah. is one of the big things that you usually get, as well as the hunter hero power. Yeah, I've seen the players pick the, the heal hero power in, uh, in shaman mirror matches from the Finley, but uh, this is quite uh, strange to me, to be honest, to mm -hmm. be picking it here. Go wants to go for that uh, board control type of strategy, maybe relying on the creator a little bit for those extra value or uh, extra card draw for later on. So creator might have been uh, affecting his decision, decision there. Yeah, I actually, th I think that you're spot on, Savits. I think when he sees cards like Fierce Monkey, which he, of course he knows is going to be trading a lot, and he also sees that his hand's not exactly an easy, um, uh, it, it, like he has Curator, which means he's going to play in the longer state of the yep. game. I think the priest here power probably makes more sense in his mind. It's definitely going to be something to look out for uh, as the game progresses, like which one would have been so better. It's, right. it's fairly easy to you know, evaluate uh, from the state of the board. The okay, head. well, double knife juggler, really powerful if it's able to land onto the right targets. Uh, yeah. Uh, Oh, this is not one of them. This is really huge. He really wants to get that fierce monkey out of the way, but now with just two juggles, it's unlikely, oh! but it does happen. Wow. Yeah, he had three juggles. Two of them had to hit, so it was unlikely, but now it's a huge swing on the board here for Gundam Fl or for Malikos, excuse me. Yeah, that was huge. Uh, Gundam Fame does pick up a uh, Blood to Iker here, so with the Fire Warax and the Blood to Iker. He could be able to deal with both of those knife jugglers. Mm -hmm. He could also go for the Corcron Elite and use the 
rusty hook if he wants to max out the value on that one. Maybe for for future turns, for the for curving out well purposes, it would be better to use the Corcoran here. But I like the fire works personally. Yeah, you know, a lot of times with Zoo, they're not necessarily trying to fight you with the quality of minions, it's about the quantity. And they benefit so much off of having a lot of these smaller minions through Dire Wolf Alpha, Defender of Arcus. Completely agree here. Yeah, I got to play him as much as he likes to go for face. Those uh, knife jugglers are something that you just can't leave on the yeah. board. So much extra value. Even with the Imp Gang boss, there would have been some uh, juggles from there, and every single minion that gets to play. I don't know, man. He was saying in his interview, deadly. like, you just there's no reason to ever trade. You just go for the health <laughs> total, because if you reach zero, you win the game. I feel like uh, hmm. like you have to eat some of those words now. <laughs> yeah, plus <laughs> seem like it. Uh, here, choosing not to go for the Defender of Argus just yet. Let's get the life tap in to get some uh, more cards to play with on future turns. Yeah, it, one of the ways that you can... Uh, well, traditionally, one of the ways you could beat Dragon Warrior with... Uh, decks like Zoo Warlock is to drain the amount of resources. He sees his opponent had two cards in hand. Fire Warax doesn't have a hero power that draws yep. him cards. Maybe he can start life tapping because he's had a pretty high life total. 27 at this day of the game is really good. Yeah, that, that Warlock hero power is absolutely huge. Like you said, uh, mm -hmm. when the value game happens, uh, because Gundam Fame does have that heal as his hero power right now, yep. I, I do think that Malagos is going to get the better of that. So Gundam Flame maybe needs to make something happen uh, fairly quickly. I don't know if those are the cards to do it, though. Yeah, he's got Corcoran Elite to eliminate the Darkshire Councilman this turn, but it's still awkward, and the 1-1 one, one Imp makes a really big difference in just being able to pick it off and start picking initiative. It absolutely does. That mm. Blackwing Corruptor would be so good if he only had a Dragon in his hand, but unfortunately he does not, so has to go for the Corcoran. Yeah, it's uh, pretty miserable, but uh, just it's something that he couldn't avoid. However, Malikos also has a little bit of awkwardness, too. Darkshire Librarian uh, doesn't synergize very well with Defender of Argus. <laughs> you need to piece it together, so... That's, that's true. Uh, Malikos does pick up oh, the Possessed oh. Villager, though. Okay, I'm a little bit curious about this play. Huh. I wanted to play that... Uh, I guess he wants to maximize the Darkshire Librarian value. I, I would have probably just been like leaning towards maybe trading there. And, uh, it's okay. With those thorns out there, he knows that Gundam Flame will have to do the trading. Right, and I think he's like interpreting Gundam Flame's hand being really awkward. He had five mana, thought about it for a while, so yep. he's trying to make his opponent pl play awkwardly. It's like, if you want to get value off your hero power, you only have four mana worth of things yeah. to use. But now, the way that it's going to play out is that uh, Gundam Flame kind of <laughs> gets to use his hero power in this situation mm -hmm. fairly effectively, keeping that uh, core crone alive for now. Yeah, looking at Gun of Flames' list too, he doesn't actually have too much of the top end that we see sometimes be put in Dragon War. He doesn't have Phoenixia, doesn't have Deathwing. Uh, he only has Gromush and Ragnaros. It is a fairly more aggressive deck, and you can tell by cards like Nazoth's first mate. It is, and here we see that Darkseid Library is so good. Battlecry discard a card. Not gonna do that this time, because his hand is going to be empty, and gets to life tap afterwards as well. So powerful. Okay, so uh, life tap. Oh, another soul fire. fire. Yeah. I wonder if he just wants to use it here. Uh, let's see. The ways he can get punished is if he picks up another soul fire or a doom guard. Doom guard, yeah. So he might might just do it here, but I probably think about saving it. It seems so worthless to just yeah. fire it away right now. Okay, well, Curator's got to do some work here. He's got to make sure to draw some good dragons, not like the fairy dragons. Yeah. Finley was already played and Fierce Monkey was already played, so unfortunately for Gundam Flame, he's only going to get that Twilight Guardian. Oh, oh no. and there's the Doom God. Oh, there's a uh, lot of things that made me laugh, but okay, one of them, of course, is the Doom Guard Soul Fire punish yeah. for not being able to use it. The, of course, the other one, of course, is Uac. I've called him Gundam Lame, but that's kind of the situation right <laughs> now. Like, he doesn't actually have much going on. His, his Dragon Warrior is limping across the <laughs> battlefield. Yeah, but that Corruptor is going to find a good target in that. Uh, in that Doom God here, and he also gets to play the Frothing Berserker with it, so it's not completely out of it just yet. But Malukas, TV, just the uh, Doom God top deck away from uh, killing his opponent. Okay, so four damage, yeah, you're right. Uh, he has life tap a decent amount, and he's not, pre had a pretty good life total too. Okay, so. Soul Fire down? That would do it, but no, does not find it at this moment. Seven mana remaining, his uh, three minions cost seven mana, so I would expect him to just play his entire hand here. <laughs> Abusive Surgeon, no, you don't want to hold it back. Yeah, certainly not. I guess you could also draw he first. He could consider drawing, yeah, yeah, that's true. 
because, of course, leaving Frothing Berserker up is a very dangerous prospect. A card that can get out of control very quickly. Yeah. Ah, I think uh, so, it's so much buffs and his opponent's so low on HP. He's just okay. going to go for it, team. Yeah. Okay. That's very brave. I like it. Yeah. And uh, Gundam Flame hoping to find a dragon to enable his stone, but... Grom? Okay. Grom keeps How him alive, I believe. Yeah, barely. By one HP. Yeah. That is extremely scary, but at the same time, you have some scary threats on the backswing as well. You have Gromish that's on the board, what and no. your Frothing Berserker is alive, so if your opponent can't kill it, you most likely have to trade into it too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Malta seems that he's going to seal the deal just yet. But Malugus will have two more draws to try to find that one damage. It shouldn't be too hard of the task to do when you're deck has a lot of uh, buffing minions. Now also an 11 archer or a stone dust board would do it from the battler. I am a little confused by the trading from that. I felt like he could have played Gromish there to try and... Uh, oh, oh, doesn't yeah. really matter. The Soulfire is going to end the game. But uh, Gun and Flame was in a tough position regardless, knowing that his opponent just had to have one extra damage, and that deck is so good at buffing uh, across the board, so it didn't really matter too much. Yeah, the, the decision to pick the, pick the heal over the life tap, that was Fairly insignificant in this game. I don't think it would have made much of a difference. Just a kind of a clunky hand, and uh, the zoo, I believe, is a is a huge favorite in that matchup too. Uh, however, we'll see what happens in game number two: Hunter versus Druid. Now, uh, you know, Gun and Flame does end up playing a, a Hunter list that has a little bit of hybrid tendencies. You see the Direwolf Alpha, for example, and a little bit more one mana minions or you know he has a tracking also to help dig through well, the one thing that i do like the inclusion of is the tundra rhino i see more hunters putting it in their list and i actually really like it because the amount of pressure that it can provide plus the synergies even with the low drop minions like kindly grandmother yeah i also like it like the inclusion of one tundra rhino i think two would be way too much but just uh, having a five mana play is also something very valuable because yeah. hunter generally has sort of a weak turn at that stage of the game so yeah. it does help really good point Coin wild growth from Maligos, uh, yeah. really, really being aggressive. Really Strange. fast hand from Maligos. He needs to. He, he has the early game covered, but he needs to find some card draw as well, or mm -hmm. some big drops to play. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess Gunplay doesn't have to worry about minions to trade with if Drew just can't take his time and ramp. Uh oh. oh. <laughs> this is like one of the only times you're really sad to see cards like Innervate because you just need yeah. other things to do. And it's particularly because Hunter is just so fast at building up the board strength. Yep, but uh, the hand that he has does deal very well with those early minions, so it's going to get those out of the way. Gundam Flame, uh, coming out a little bit awkward here. You, you would love to play something like a, like an animal companion here instead of the bow, because the bow is limited damage and uh, like going at face when you're opponent. Oh, <laughs> potentially the worst draw. Uh, maybe not, like something like Call of the Wild at this stage would have been, sure. been even worse, but a uh, very weak draw. Well, it's more damage, which uh, I guess in the, deep down in his heart, he's still a little bit excited about the possibilities, but you're absolutely right. He needs to play more minions to have recursive damage. Now he goes in the same time. It's not like his hand is uh, <laughs> rainbows and butterflies either. Yeah, so weak. This is the type of game that I actually kind of like, like watching, where both of the players either have a very good hand or a very bad hand, because mm -hmm. now it's like... When the hands are weak, uh, the decision making is really huge. Like trying to make the best of what you got. Right. Like for example, what's the value of that attack? You know, you're you do have some damage in the hand with the unleash and kill commands. Uh -huh. um, but at the same time, you're still pretty far. Your opponent was at 28. So why attack there, Savits from Gundam Flame? I don't really know. Like what changed from there? Like from the previous turn of not attacking to attacking now. He didn't pick up a second bow or mm -hmm. anything. But uh, I guess it just feels like with the two kill commands, he has more uh, reach. So just putting in the early damage at, so that if yeah. he does draw the second Eagle Horn bow, it, uh, it's going to help him out. Yeah, it's a possibility. M maybe it's just muscle memory. Too much. Uh, every turn you have to go face and start hitting damage. Yeah. Gundam Flame picking up <laughs> Huge Toad is significant just because he has a minion. And that does give Mally Ghost an opportunity to answer. He's got Fandral and the Living Roots. Ooh. Uh, the, the, the toad is not so huge here. Fun yeah. Oh, he's not going to go for the Pantral chest. Okay. Okay. Doesn't want to take damage on any of his minions. Well, it was an option to just go for the Pantral here. But uh wants to save it for uh, maybe a Wrath? Yeah, uh, he also has the Feral Rage yep. too for the following turn. That's true. So if he just went for the Inner with Feral Rage, it would have feel, felt a little bit wasted uh, mm -hmm. just going for face with it. Gundam Flame dragging for uh, 
or something like a high main or maybe Call of the Wild Future. Oh, so I guess it's not the worst, but... Uh, There's actually a lot of the implications of the decision. You know, do you want to go for the minion? Uh, which minion do you go for? Um, yeah, Th this is yeah. so awkward. Like, the, if he had some kind of two mana removal in his hand, he could just uh, he could pick the animal companion. Maybe he might he might pick it anyway. Yeah, animal companion only lets him squeeze into hero power. Versus Tundra yeah. Rhino helps him clear and sets up a two-one, but it's so easy for a Druid to clear. Yeah. And of course, we know Quick Shot is just very reactive. And I'm pretty sure Gundam Flame said verbatim he doesn't like being reactive and playing a controlling style. I could imagine him picking any of these three gods in this situation. He's going to go for the Rhino, but not played just yet. Just gonna unleash a Hound <laughs> oh, and <God>. uh, <laughs> remove that Drake from the board. He realizes that it's unlikely that uh, Malikas would uh, would get a ton of minions on the board at the same time. He trades! So I feel cheated, man. <laughs> I do too, bro. <laughs> do you? I feel like uh, you're actually happy to see that kind of stuff. Well, okay. Maybe a little yeah. bit. Oh, well, that... Wow. Oh, so, man. suddenly things are looking <laughs> much better <laughs> for Gundam Flame. Finding a, a, a fairly obvious play for his following turn. However, right now he's stuck with just seven mana. And mm -hmm. I think he has to deadly shot this. It doesn't really get much better than that. Yeah, uh, the only minion that might have higher target priority is Maligos, well, I guess but yeah, yeah it's, he's still far away from playing his, uh, from his point of view. He doesn't know his opponent has Interfate. Yep. Set up the best Call of the Wild turn possible. Of course, if you're able to get Tundra Rhina and Call of the Wild out, that's uh, the big Wombo combo, as we like to say. Yep. Maligos uh, doesn't have any other reasonable play. He's just going to go for the Thunderland and use that uh, Federal Rage, and when he knows that uh, he's guaranteed to get that... Uh, Double effect from it. Doesn't have to choose one. Okay, Arden Squire not really do much. If you go for the Tundra Rhino, you can kill Command. And five health is a little bit tricky for Druid to remove. You have the upside of playing Call of the Wild next turn and get yep. 12 damage instead of the five from Huffer. It's interesting. He did just saw a Federal Rage, so the chance of the Tundra Rhino surviving are decent. But uh, also, like, there could be two swipes. There are, there's a lot of ways to mm -hmm. for. Uh, for Malagos to remove the Rhino. Looks like he's going for it. He's just gonna remove that and try to have all three of his animal companions charging next turn. Yeah, he wants all, all of them to have the pressure. And I mean, when Malagos sees this, he's gonna definitely have a high target or high priority removal. So you can bet oh, yeah. that if he doesn't pick up a spell from Raven Idol, he'll remove it with Moonfire. Um, oh, wow, <laughs> fast pick there. <laughs> Faster than that, we can keep up at least. Yeah, with that inner weight. Oh, finds the Malagos. Let's just swipe. Unfortunately, he he will have to use both his both the rod, mm. the Moonfire, and even the inner weight. So Gundam Flame not gonna be too sad to see that the Rhino get killed because it did trade for three cards. Yeah, not to mention your opponent still hasn't played anything on the board. So Call of the Wild gets oh yeah two turns at least for effect. And Arjun Squire seems to also be both boosted onto the board, making a 2-1 Divine Shield. That's not bad either. Not bad. It does kind of, like, swipe is very powerful there. Oh, man. Oh, even a high man, but... Yeah. I don't know. It's pretty hard to pass up on the Call of the Wild. Uh, I don't, the high man wouldn't be terrible. Just play the high man, play the Squire. Because yeah. the, uh, there's some added value in this, because uh, the, the Call of the Wild will summon a Leox, so having two minions on the board when you play Call of the Wild is kind of helpful with the... Uh, with the extra mm -hmm. attack buffs that you get to use immediately. Yeah. It is also mana efficient, squeezing in hero power over two turns. That's right. So next turn he will also be able to hero power. Okay. Feral Rage. Chooses to play Ancient of War. Uh, interesting inclusion. Also, he does have Ragnaros in his deck list, which is also yeah. uh, pretty interesting too. Malagos just like some of these big bombs. There was a time where Ragnaros was getting played in a lot of Druid decks, but that was prior to Malagos. It kind of... I feel like it shifted a little bit uh, mm -hmm. when players started playing Malagos and felt like maybe it's too greedy to be playing a, both an 8-mana minion and a 9-mana minion when you also have a Yoxer yeah. in your deck, which is then Awkward spot for Gundam Flame. If he chooses Call of the Wild, he it, it, he has at best 9 damage to go through it, and then the Huffer has to trade into it. So most likely you have to overkill the Ancient of War. He would have a pretty sturdy board, but it is vulnerable to things like Azure Drake Swipe. 
So it's one of the things you have to really be considering, like, do I want to just play it slow once again? Do I have to use my second kill command instead of playing the Call of the Wild here so that I could play around potential hand from my opponent? Or should I just be more proactive and try to pressure my opponent out of the game, use kill command to finish on the following turn? I think he has to Call of the Wild. It's so much stronger. It leaves you up with those two animal companions instead of just having a huge toad. If he wants to, he can even play the huge toad here instead of hero powering, but that kind of commits in a Maybe too much, so if there was a spell power swipe, the Toad would also get removed. Now he gets to... Um, very likely to keep a... Uh, or ha have a uh, 5 damage kill command. Here we go, Yorks uh -oh. are on. Oh, that's not a good start at all. Yeah, because now it's going to be any kind oh, of work really inefficient. Uh-oh! Oh, at least that's one he got on his own guy, but... Uh, not at uh, 12 health. Nope. Oh, and now the Not secret's been revealed. Yeah. And he hasn't played that many spells, so I feel like it's going to be done pretty soon. That was actually a lot worse. <laughs> it it's actually helped out. Oh, oh, that's pretty good. Leo, he's going to come back, but uh, great one to see. And there's the Vaporize up. That's actually wow. all he needed, but he's still in a little bit of an awkward position. The no, Vaporize is pretty clutch, though, to be able to eliminate that minion. Yeah, and that Twisting Nether. Oh, my goodness. If he didn't pick up the Twisting Nether there, the game would have just been over. Wow. Well, we know it's a Vaporize, so Houndmaster on the huge Toad would he work knows out too. better. Oh, yeah, he does also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the Vaporize was casted twice. That's right. Yep. So Gunflame is very well aware of a Vaporize, so most likely he would attack with the Liak. He's not aware of the Paladin Secret, and I don't think that interaction works if it's Noble Sacrifice, mm -hmm. does it? If you attack with Liak in this position, and it's Noble Sacrifice and Vaporize, uh, both I think trigger. It, uh, dep yeah, it depends which order they were played in, I believe. So if the Vaporize came out first, I think the Vaporize would uh, would uh, kill the minion and then the... Hmm. I, I ask you yeah. because I feel like you've yogged a I'm lot trying more to remember, I yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to uh, think here. Um, if the Noble Sacrifice would trigger it, it, it would trigger too. Yeah. Uh. All right, well, that's uh, some interesting hearth si Hearthstone science <laughs> that I would leave Disguised Toast to uncover for us. <laughs> um, well, Maligos wow. in an awkward spot, so he just puts his faith in Maligos and hopes that his opponent can't kill him, but, but that's a can, lot of damage. Yeah. Even without that yeah. uh, quick shot, there was, uh, there was enough to end the game with just a kill command. Yeah, certainly. So that's going to wrap up game number two, and the Hunter is able to take down the Druid. Uh, just showing you the power of being able to rebound onto the board, even though uh, Yogg-Saron did clear it. Yeah. The Yogg looks so good, but not good enough. And uh, the game is now even at one on one All right, so uh, now we turn into a best of five. But apparently, uh, Mally goes is very good at dancing, and he uses it both. He uses it primarily uh, on his spare time to impress the members of the opposite gender. Apparently, huh? that's what I was told. I heard he's very successful. Yeah, here he is trying to impress the Hearthstone audience with his uh, plays. <laughs> members of the same gender, <laughs> on average, of course. Yeah, I was welcoming to all all things to all people. I started to wonder there, uh, what if uh, his Malagos decks uh, let him down? Is he gonna change his nickname into something else? If Absolutely he changes not. Changes his uh, favorite card. I think he doubles down. I think next championship he makes, he brings five Malagos decks instead. <laughs> <laughs> Malagos Shaman, Malagos Rogue, Malagos Druid, and uh, I guess Dragon Warlock. I mean, you're testing out some Dragon variants yeah. of Warlock. Those work pretty well. I, I do think that there's something there with that Malagos Warlock. Malagos Shaman, not quite there. Nah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. I right. tried it, but can't really work out that well. Both players Maliganing their entire hand, so they might end up with some garbage here. And uh, no Fiery War Axe for Maligos, but he does have some early spells to, to deal with his uh, opponent's early threats. Gundam Flame looking at no Innervate, no Wild growth, but he, Living Roots is okay if he wants to play it on turn one. Mm -hmm. Against Warriors, sometimes, however, you do want to save it later on because of how strong of an answer a Ravaging Ghoul is to the one. Yeah, this is a matchup that hasn't really favored Druid very much, but I personally like playing it a lot. Um, I, we talked about it a little bit last Ooh. week. That Justicar is a huge pickup against them, against the Amalagos Druid. I actually ha re remember one of the players in uh, Europe Championships last weekend say that uh, in this matchup they even keep Justicar Truhart in the starting hand because mm -hmm. it, it gives you so much of uh, like an armor buffer against the against the Amalagos burst that eventually arrives. So yeah, it's uh, a very powerful card. That is actually one of the primary win conditions against the Druids. Yep. Fatigue. You just actually make them run out of resources. 
Uh, you don't. You can't really pressure them nearly well, as well as uh, they can pressure you, and you're not going to get onto the board as fast as they do, even if you're keeping up in removal. Yeah, that, that's normally how it goes. Uh, I, I, I favor the warrior quite heavily here, and uh, what the druid needs to do in order to be able to win is to kind of cycle through their deck very quickly and uh, play the threats faster than the warrior draws into all of his removal. Because the first threats that you play are almost guaranteed to get removed. Yeah. Um, you know, it just, it just kind of lines up really nicely with the war's removal too, just like you said. Like, you have two giants, you have a Malikos. It's kind of like the two shield same executes type of removal. Yeah. Um, so the whole point is that you actually really need to hurt, hit that early ramp and get onto the board really fast. And even if you have something small like Living Roots or, you know, just like Fandral attacking the face over and over, that usually adds up over time. Yeah, and uh, Gundam Flame, that Mire Keeper from the top, by the way, was a great pickup. Yes. Gundam Flame does have a nourish in his hand, because sometimes it does happen that the Druid sort of runs out of gas and don't pick up the card show at all, and then the Warrior gets those extra turns to pick up extra removals and get that armor up, but uh, Gundam Flame's hand, hand is looking quite excellent right now. But Malukas also with a fairly strong hand. Yeah, I'm looking at the specific deck list from Gundam Flame. Um, he does have Mulch in his deck instead of the two Feral Rages, and he does have Blood Mage Thanos and Ancient of War instead of cards like Gadget Sand. So uh, it is a little variation of specific tech. I also saw some people have been putting Violet Teacher back into Maligos Druid and then cutting some of the three mana spells in order to have a lot more robust power to build onto the board as well. Yep. So it's interesting to see that Druid's still having the small innovations. I guess. Malagos' version would be a lot better against War because he has Ragnaros in his list too. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. certainly better than the Ancient of War. The Ancient of War kind of just tends to get executed or shield slammed. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's not a great yeah. card in this particular matchup. It's more designed to, to beat the aggressive strategies like uh, Zoo Walk. Yeah, and I think without the Gadget Sand, that's going to make his life even more difficult because one of the ways yeah. you can try and outpower the control decks early on is to just draw a ton of cards yeah. and you know out-resource them. Yeah, exactly. And uh, not having that auctioneer uh, kind of increases the likelihood that Gundam Flame will run out of uh, threats. But uh, with this hand, he might do okay. The yeah. Nourish might pick up a second Nourish. Raven Idols might give him something very valuable. That's true. You were actually petitioning for Raven Idling for minions. In this match, I, I don't think it's that terrible. It always does depend on your hand and if your if your hand is low on value, I would uh, usually go for uh, usually go for the spell. So you pick up maybe something that draws cards. Even a Starfire can often be okay. Mm -hmm. But um, with that like uh, that Norris hand, I think it's an, uh, could be an option because he does have a lot of like a uh, lot of cards. So, so if you're going for a spell, what exactly are you trying to find? Uh, well, you know you don't. It's like high value ones like if you see that your opponent is like late into the game you can have Wisps of the Old Gods kind of have load onto the board right. or you have um, you know Moonglade Portal those are some of the better ones I think. Moonglade Portal is, uh, is certainly a powerful one Wisps of the Old Gods doesn't do that well in a, in a Malugos list because you don't have the power of the wilds yeah, to synergize with it there's also no roar yeah, yeah you're right and the other token list it's really powerful yeah but uh, also like when you go generally the, the spell picking is, uh, is more powerful because uh, you are always obviously getting uh, class cards, and class cards have a lot of value. Whereas if you go for the minion, you might end up with just some two drops and, the <laughs> and three drops, and that's kind of miserable. All right, here we go. The Justicar hits the board, and he's also going to just go ahead and uh, coin out the tank up. And I like that a lot, because it looks like the coin is not too valuable going forward. So spending the coin to gain four health, pretty good. Yeah, not too bad at all. All right, Garden of Flame, a lot of choices here, but a lot of spells can start off with a Raven Idol. And I do like Raven Idling for a minion, now that we've seen the context of his hand. Oh, he did Whoa! go for a minion. Yeah. There we go. That's pretty awesome. The Usera, but he needs to chop down the armor first. One Execute was used, and uh, <laughs> we have the Caster Vision, so we know that the second Execute is here. But the, picking the Usera and, uh, and uh, lowering his opponent's armor w would look pretty decent from his point of view. The Jungle Moonkin also an option because of the amount of uh, damage that he has in his hand. <laughs> like build your own Malagos like Jungle Moonkin and uh, the Blood yeah. Mage Thanos and just go for high value damage. But I, I would still be shocked if he doesn't pick the... Oh, Whoa. he does go for it. Wow. Interesting. That's a swipe for 6-3. Really wow. powerful stuff. I played some Jungle Moonkin builds with Dragon Drew. Right. It's really fun. But I do recognize how dangerous it is as a double-edged sword because your opponent gets the benefit of the spell power. Yeah. The warrior, I guess, can't use the spell power that well. Though. <laughs> he would love to acolyte, acolyte revenge here, but the, <laughs> then, his, uh, then his acolyte would die to the revenge. Yeah. He would only throw one card. 
Yes, Mo Jungle Moon oh, Kid yeah. is trolling in that department. That Jungle Moon Kid worked out pretty well. Um, and especially since the second execute is in Malikos' hand, uh, it worked out much better than Yusera would have. Yeah, but at the same time, that's also a min an execute that he can't use for the other big oh, yeah. priority targets as well. Like Arcane Giants, for yeah. example. So, yeah. He got away with just using Revenge. And that's Fire true. Warrax. And what did he gain in, in response? He got to keep his Moonfire and Living Roots because that's probably what he'd done, like, in, you know, Yusera and yeah. Moonfire. Wants to save up a lot of burn, but uh, Gundam Flame, it feels like he's, uh, he's a little bit on a clock here, and I wouldn't, if I was him, I would uh, honestly <laughs> be very keen to play the Blood Mage Stalinus right now to try find uh, like a big play for next turn, because it looks like he's uh, he's not going to be able to do much, but um, Mayor Keeper would be better this turn, and if he wants to play the Blood Mage too, he would have to use the Inner Weight. Inner Weight is pretty sweet for the Malaga swipe on a later turn after, a, uh, after an Emperor turn. It's a lot of conditional stuff. Mulch yeah. to deny his opponent any resource. Wow, yeah. He knows really that, aggressive. He knows that uh, Malikus doesn't play all that many big minions in his uh, warrior. There is a Chroma somewhere in there, but uh, just gonna use it here to deny the draw. Wind Fury Harpy. Okay. Could have been worse, I guess. <laughs> I like how positive you are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it's a six mana, four yeah. or five. But, uh. Yeah. But it's a decent minion because it's gonna be in a one drop or a two drop, so you'd rather true, have a true. rather have a big minion than a small one. You're absolutely right. Like you, you could have gotten some really inconsequential, you know, tiny fin type power. Exactly. Stuff. Yeah. So I would say that that's certainly above average, and he can even play it here if he wants to with the tank up and a shield slam. Certainly, I think, you know, Wind Fury Harpy also kind of puts your opponent on threat to remove it, you know, it's, it's, it's rather yeah. threatening, that fact that it has Wind Fury and it's reasonable status, so your opponent, if you have Swipe, would probably use it. Yeah. I really like to shield some here. He knows that there are bigger threats in Gundam Flames deck, like the Arcane Chance, but he still has second shield slam and an Execute in his hand, so he doesn't really need to, like, try to save the shield slam for something bigger here. Oh, how oh much damage? wow. Well, that's, that's quite a bit, but it's not quite enough. He needs to deal so right. much damage. 20, 20... 24 damage account 25 uh, so he's still off by a good amount by nine damage yeah get another living uh, another moon fire he'd just be off by two i wouldn't mind if he let's just trade in the blood mage first and then swipe just to <laughs> try to find a minion to play it would uh he would miss out on some damage yes but i, I think the drawing is just extremely important here Try to calculate how much damage he can do if he just swiped and just played like the the Meyer Keeper and try to be optimistic with the burst from Malagos. Yeah. Because with the Living Roots and the Moonfire and Malagos, uh, that would be 20 damage from the hand, guaranteed. Yeah. Assuming Blood Mage is dead. He could just like kind of go off with the Malagos right here, and I uh, use the Living Roots and the Moonfires and then uh, rely on York closing on the game, closing the game, but. Uh, just gonna make like the kind of the obvious play, I suppose. This seemed like the, the go-to play. Maybe the other stuff would have been a little bit too uh, gimmicky or uh, or weird, like trading in the blood mage. Like he might still pick up a good card to draw. Like, it's a good card to play. Yeah. So uh, Malikos will survive like any kind of burst right now if that mm -hmm. uh, his opponent do. But he's still gonna be a little bit scared. He chooses the brawl. Yep. You don't really need the Brawl again for anything else in uh, this match. Ooh, that's a great result. I, I think Malagos is uh, likely to want to keep that Blood Mage round for now, mm -hmm. uh, denying the extra draw from his opponent. And this is what I was talking about. Like Now it's just so uh, so awkward. I think he has to rot his own, uh, own Blood Mage and try to pick up uh, like a second Norris or a, maybe a Giant or something along those lines. Yeah. Uh, I think he just needs to threat. Or he could go for what you suggested, the Mali Ghost, and just try to see how much pressure he can generate from it. Yep. It doesn't really get, like, much better than that. He could pick up one more Moonfire for it, but still. Right. Uh, 23 damage. 24 yeah. with the hero power. Blood Mage is also there, so that, that does add 3 extra there. Oh, excuse me, he can't hero power because uh, yeah. it's 11 mana. Not quite enough mana for that, but... Mm. Interested to see what uh, he chooses to do here. He is going to go for the Malagos and just uh, dump his hand here. Deal that, uh, what is it? Eight damage twice and one, yeah, seven I think, damage. I think yeah. it's 24 because it with the, attacks. Yeah, with the Thanos attack. So here we can see that those uh, four or five tank ups that Malagos got in uh, really valuable, kind of negating one of those Spellbar Moonfires. 
And Maligos has the execute. So now it'll come down uh -huh. to if Gundam Flame has enough uh, to continue to press the advantage, but Maligos can bounce back. That's what Tank Up and even, honestly, Iron Forge Portal is really strong. In it is. Like this. It really is. And uh, Gundam Flame, I feel like his only hope to, to win the game at this point is that. Is the Yorks are on, which certainly can do it if he gets a little bit fortunate. Something like Norris into double, double giants. Yeah, those would uh, maybe put some pressure on, but it's pretty demanding to be getting such a great sequence. Oh, of here we go. Oh boy. All right, so Yaxron needs to draw cards and try to summon some minions if possible. 14 damage is also not impossible at all. Yeah, I've seen that's more damage of it. than that get dealt. No charge minion. Animated armor. Oh, Journey below. Anubarak? Ah, that's right. Oh, wow. Sylvanas that's not a bad oh. thought to you at all. Wow. Okay, quality okay. weakens his board significantly. Just. Yeah. But so far, still pretty good, Them. Where, oh. where does that go? Oh, what? Oh. Wow. So actually, he's one mind blast away from winning the game at this point. Oh. It was the that was, was close. It was really good. I mean, he, uh. none of those guards that are in his hand right now were there before the Yorks are on, uh, and he dealt nine damage to his opponent. Yep. Uh, however, is that enough still? I'm not sure. Like the ice block that oh, he got is, is uh, it's not very useful, and those worthless imps are also uh, kind of like living up to their name. Wow. Priest of the Fees isn't bad either because every spell you play just <laughs> restores your health as a warrior, so you can be gaining seven health yeah. uh, at least per turn. If only he had more spells right now. Yeah, he's at least got Shield Slam for the time being. Yep. Gundam Flame going to start uh, digging through his deck, see if he can pick up potentially a second giant. Double giant swings are so powerful. That would be great. Oh, Norris also uh, not that bad, but he doesn't have that many cards remaining. But he will get to dig that second giant from the deck when he chooses to. All right. Well, that's the kind of pressure he needs. Still a little bit farther away, though. Maligo's looking notice to be stressed. He's got Sylvanas and Shield yep. Slam to steal the giant. Uh, yeah, that certainly seems like a like pretty strong play. Um, Gundam Flame, they're uh, choosing not to play the Worthless Imps in fear of the second brawl. I think he's also worried about the Mage Secret, too. We've seen him test for Counterspell, but we haven't seen him test for Mirror Entity, for example. Yep. So he's taking a very safe approach. Looks oh, like he is okay. still playing the Sylvanas. Well, I guess in this scenario, Sylvanas would be up against Sylvanas and would trade. Ooh, and Gundam playing play in a tough spot right now. He has much more cards than his opponent does in his hand, but not in his deck. There's very little threats remaining. What is yeah. the one arcane giant? And uh, that's pretty much it. One giant. Emperor Thorison was was uh, discarded. Ancient of War was killed. Malagos was yeah. killed. There's, uh, there's not hit. really anything else. It's going to hit like his wild growth and innervate soon. Yep. Yeah, there's one of them. That's wild growth. He's, he's pretty much out of threats outside that last giant, so I think it's going to push really hard to get them, which Kind of surprises me that he chose to go for the wild growth compared to Nourish, because maybe maybe he's like really thin into his deck. He doesn't want to overdraw too deep into fatigue. Uh, it does surprise me as well. Well, what are these worthless imps gonna do? <laughs> Although you couldn't tell that if they're worthless just by their artwork, <laughs> they definitely don't oh, no. skip Arms Day. Uh, two cards remaining, so that's probably why he chose to not go for the Nourish. But uh, uh, I don't know. I guess that's as good as Moonfire will get with spell power. Yeah. But just the tank up, I think that that has made all the difference in this game. Getting that oh, early yeah. tank up, uh, he has played it how, how many times now? I don't have like a counter for it, but it has been a lot of tanking up. Yeah, uh, well, he played Justicar on turn seven and then coined the hero power, yeah. and then it's been at least four or five turns of it. So we can extrapolate Even somewhere more. between uh, you know 12 to 20 health <laughs> gain, which is the difference of winning or losing at this point. Yeah. Uh, I'm starting to be a believer in the Justicar keep in the starting of the Warrior yeah. after seeing this. Was it George C that told you that? I'm not sure who it was. I can't quite remember. Feels something like he would he tell you based off that. He like try to simplify the matchup <laughs> to just one thing of the Mulligan keep. Yeah, that yeah. does sound a little bit like him, but I'm not sure. So 
Let's keep it open for now. How awkward, by the way, is this technical of this off that Gundam Flame has? It just feels like he's not going to play it for very much. And I still think he's on the try to get the Arcane Giant play. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Yeah, but the nice thing about the Tentacle and the Zoth is it threatens the opponent's Sylvanas. That's true, but this is pretty miserable for ten mana. Tentacle of no Zoth, hero power, pass. <laughs> he attacks <laughs> into the blood of Rage. Yeah, just just to win Rage. Oh, God. Well, if he hits it five more times with his uh, hero, <laughs> he's going to be dead. <laughs> oh, man. Malikos can get value off the Sylvanas if he chooses to steal the Tentacle of Nazoth. Oh, well, I guess you do it. Well, he's definitely tanking up. We can agree on that much. Yep. On the brink of death at 5 in the face of Yogg-Saron, coming back all the way to 17. Um, I, I guess you can just take the Tentacle and then uh, play Harrison. He's tested for a Mirror Entity now, a uh, Counterspell... He ha he has been able to attack the face. I feel like too. Well, kind of. I'm, I'm starting to think here, like how the how the game would have played out if he chose to go for the Usera instead. Because the Usera would have been uh, executed for sure, right? And that would have been the last execute. So maybe the Malikas would have then survived somehow, right? Or maybe he would have to use a shield slam yeah. and the giant would survive. Because like using the spell of our swipe there. For the, on his opponent's face, like it's not that much extra damage. He could have just like used a swipe on the Justicar instead, getting a few right. less in. But uh, and then you would have also gotten a potential no threat yeah. if you have Emerald Drag Drake or the Laughing Sister. But uh, this uh, this is just this is just over. Like yep. Malikos can trade. He, he's just gassed. There's just nothing else remaining. He can just clear the board and then just yep. tank up, and his opponent has, like, no cards yep. remaining. And if Malikos has been keeping track the entire time, he's well aware that Gundam Flame has yet to play some of his other useless cards, like Nourish and Wildcraft. Yep, we are done here. Just uh, trading the minions in. Yep. Making sure he's getting the proper sequencing. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, I think that was also even a play around, like, Epic. Maybe he knows what's going on here. So, wrapping up game number three, uh, Malikos takes the lead. And puts himself two games away from going to the semifinals. Yeah, quite a convincing win as well. Even, even the Yogg was powerful from... Uh, yeah. But from, uh, even though the Yogg's been play. pretty strong today, it hasn't been game deciding in their favor no, yet. It hasn't. So we're going to see if whether or not Gunflame can turn this series around. Playing for pride and also playing for the glory of Japan. So Gunflame has a lot on his shoulders here. He's the only Japanese representative. We usually have one per season of the championship. And we do have a Japanese player who did represent us last year in BlizzCon, but this year we could potentially have zero depending on how it ends up falling. So Gundam Flame has a lot to carry on his shoulders. He certainly does, but he's looking good in his uh, quarterfinal right now, being up 2-1. Uh, oh, excuse uh, me. Maligos oh, is up. so not yeah. looking so good. Not <laughs> looking so good here. <laughs> oh, it makes it That's up. the caster lingo. We're looking oh, for some no. eats. I don't know. Anything could happen. Let's go into game number four <laughs> and see if Gundam Flame <laughs> can tie up the series. We're going to yeah. go to Mage versus Druid. This is a Mage list, which is, I think, um, I actually really like his Mage yeah. list. I feel like Water Elemental is a card that's often forgotten by a lot of Mage players. Yes, this is the type of uh, Tempo Mage list that I personally like. The, the, he does not have an Archmage Hand tonight, which we we mm -hmm. saw in the first series of the day. Big, kind, of a, kind of a bad card. It was a little bit too slow. And uh, here, uh, those two Water Elementals at four mana, I, I think it fills out the curve very well. Yes, and a lot of times I feel like Flame Strike, Firelands Portal, Archmage Antonitis, even cards like Face of Summer, which was in and out for a while, I feel like those cards just are so awkward relative to the game plan that the mage wants to, to go for. Um, and I also definitely felt like the, the Forgotten Torch lists were not played very well by a lot of players who didn't really understand it. However, one thing that I do have a, a big question mark over the, the, was that if you're playing Forgotten Torch, a lot of times you have to have a lot more cycle in the deck yep. in order to hit that burn. And it feels like Gun and Flame doesn't have as much draw as I would personally like to see in the deck list. But I am curious because he does have, you know, double Cabal Stone, for example. So maybe that can help him there too. Yeah, that should help a little bit. Doesn't uh, doesn't dig through his own deck, but uh, but uh, can, uh, giving those extra cards certainly does help. But Innervate. Going for the Drake here, uh, and uh, just going to use the Moonfire. So look at the Emperor Thorison, but uh, I do uh, do agree with uh, with this completely. 
Yeah, and look at that. He also picks up Nourish, so he yeah. has a coin play on the following turn. Oh, yeah, that's really important, because otherwise the, it might have been a weak turn next turn for him, but uh, the Nourish is going to help. Okay, so Gundam Flame on turn four. Just wants to remove that Azure Drake. It's very threatening to almost anything he does. Uh, however, maybe he doesn't have to remove it fully this turn. We've seen Temple Mages also take turns really slowly. If it's not very clean removal, they just, you know, ping, for example, and pass. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty threatening. It's, you, got, you don't want to leave your opponent with a spell power, so I do agree with this Frostbolt thing. Feels a tiny bit weak, but I think it, he'll be okay. So here we go. Boy Nourish. Looking pretty obvious. There's nothing else to do. Like, you don't want to leave him with zero power. That's way too weak. So yeah. you, you generally uh, want yeah. to go for the mana crystals. Is there with this time hand, yes. that you want to go for the draw? Like, what, what when's the time to want to go for draw versus the ramp here? If he had something like, like a only spells in his hand right now, let's say he had a, like a swipe and two leaving roots, Moonfire, some of the, the like weaker cards and the cheaper cards. But with this hand that he has right now, with that Ancient of War, Emperor Thor, oh, and he, no, even the Ragnos <laughs> Pile Out, it's a, it's a fairly easy decision to just go for the mana to get those big minions out early. Absolutely. But Bolly Boar was uh, picked up from that uh, Kabbalist Storm, so that's going to help dealing with that, at least the first threat. Yeah, he's got Polymorph Boar and a very easy way to remove it too with Arcane Blast. Yep, so he could go for maybe Mana Worm, Bolly Boar, Arcane Blast. I wonder. Uh, it's it's kind of tempting to save those cheap spells for, uh, for uh, the Flame Waker too. So maybe just the Mana Worm, Arcane Blast. Well, now you don't play a Mana Worm because then you accepted the fact that you missed a, an attack buff on it. <laughs> and Savitz, we're talking about playing for pride here. You don't oh, let yeah, your opponent true. know that you missed an attack. So yeah. you just Arcane Blast it, ping the face, and just move on with uh, the next turn. <laughs> I hate seeing this when players like play one of their cards and it, it's not being a card throw and then pause. Mm -hmm. Quite often signals a little bit like a, okay. like weakness. It's just a thing here. Wow, okay. getting so greedy with the Flame Waker, but it might pay off. Yeah, I was actually anticipating maybe even Effigy there to set up, but it totally makes sense if he wants to go for a big burst. You've seen these mages not really play tempo, but also just play bursty. And the Effigy value with those uh, mirror images is uh, very marginal. You know? It's true. Mirror image is super clutch. Okay. Oh, that might help. He does have that Arcane Blast, so... Now the Arcane Blast is going to be uh, certainly helpful in uh, potentially killing that uh, Ragnar's Fire Lord off the board. Yeah, he's got um, Flame Waker and a bunch of these cheap spells. Oh, yeah. He will only be able to cast uh, either Arcane Missiles or the Mirror Images. He would love to play both, but that's not possible. Six missiles, has to land four times. Uh, yeah, I don't think the odds are very good on that. No, the odds are not good at all. So uh, choosing just to kind of make the safer play here and uh, and just go for the mirror images to maybe stop something like a Feral Rage from killing his Flame Waker. Okay, uh, well, now it goes a little bit of an awkward spot here. Uh, it has to think about ways he can optimally remove the minions and improve Ragnaros' chances Ooh, of Raven Idol is great. Yeah, picks up Swipe, that'd be oh. really strong. Pretty sure he's uh, trying to just... Uh, oh play the Arcane Giant here, and with those one mana spells he will still be able to afterwards mm. mark off the wild. Also healing touch on the Ragnaros. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of a cute play, maybe. He but, just uh, spent so much yeah. doing damage to Ragnaros, yeah. showing that he doesn't have a direct removal for it. That would be so funny. Just go for like hero power and healing. Let's see. Oh, he's actually yeah. doing it. Well, I love it. I like it. You know, kind of putting your opponent in awkward positions. Because if you play Arcane Giant and he has like another Fireball, what if he just easily starts pinging your minions down again? <laughs> Oh man, that's awesome. Ah, uh, Ragnar's Pilot hitting the wrong target in this instance, but still oh, pretty man. good second Flame Waker. So Flame Waker, mm -hmm. Arcane Missiles, wow, it's like one mana Avenging Wrath almost. I mean, you gotta play the three mana for the Flame Waker, but it's going to stick around, so FPG is also going to get the double effect. Fireball, also an option. Arcane Missiles fire seven plus the Fireball. That's a, I mean, that's like almost pretty much guaranteed. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Actually, now that I think about it a little bit more, <laughs> the Fireball seems pretty obvious because the Arcane Missiles wouldn't be enough to kill the Oh, oh gets a little bit unlucky there, but well, not really. Okay. I mean, there's 11 hits and only had to hit two of them. Nah, that's overwhelmingly. Yeah. And uh, Milagos might be forcing forced to Yorking here. He has the Emperor and the Arcane Giant, but it's just so scary. 
you know how much damage there is in the in the mage. Oh no, this could go so wrong. Oh man, York. if this was the New York, right oh there, man. Just be like... Well, I mean, it's this is <laughs> actually <laughs> where he wishes it was New York. Yeah. This is starting to get kind of out of control. Oh, well, spirit helps a little. Revenge. He's gonna deal clear. one damage. Holy fire! What does the target? No. Oh. I'm still healed for five, so. Okay. <laughs> Again on his own uh, minion. It's dicey. Oh, I don't know about that, Savita. For 10 mana, I think I'm looking a lot more <laughs> from my cards than that. Yeah. Oh, man. Me too, Frodo. Uh, that was not too great. Okay, well, Gundam Flame has... It's basically open season at this point with his uh, Flame Wakers. It's and really also, is. he gets Explorer's Hat, which is another spell to play <laughs> later on. Because Explorer's Hat goes to whoever's minion dies. It's not like Blessing of Wisdom, for example. If you put it on any minion, it goes to the person who plays yeah, it. So he could play the hat like seven times, and then uh, <laughs> his Yogg Saron is going to cast the, <laughs> yeah, cast the, the ultimate the spirit bomb on Yogg. Yeah. Oh, God. But on uh, this board right now, Gundam Flame, wow, so strong. And yeah. Malagos already played his uh, Yogg, so how do you clear this? Oh, swipe, perhaps, to help him? That, that, would, that would be it oh, with dude. the trick. Dude, that was swipe. That was actually bring him single-handedly back in the game there. Yeah, like almost. There was still been one flame waker and uh, something afterwards. Feral raid. Uh, it doesn't really work here. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I think it just has to go for the living. I see it's just dead. I'm I think he's just dead, he dead no matter dead. what now. I could just dead on the board. Yeah. So that is, uh, yeah, he's just dead. All right, so oh. Gundam Flame lives. I mean, it seems like the person who's playing the Yogg is not exactly winning these games here. Nope. But, um, you know, the series is tied, and now we're going into a best of three, Savits, and see who's going to take this best of seven. Remember, single elimination. It's win or go home. And Gundam Flame able to keep the pace. It's been uh, tit for tat, one game apiece, every single game, just tying up the series back and forth. Yep, that mage deck looks so good there. I mean, yeah. the Druid draw wasn't even bad, but it's just uh, the mage uh, getting maybe a little bit fortunate with uh, picking up that Polymorph Boar in particular to deal with the first Ancient of War, because you don't want to put 10 damage into it. And if he didn't find a Polymorph Effect, that's what he would have had to do. Game number five, whoever wins this will take a commanding series lead. Three to two and only be one game away from moving to the semifinals. Remember, it's best of seven, single elimination. If you're just tuning in, we've had a pretty back and forth series. We're starting from the Zoo Warlock taking the win, with most recently the Temple Mage blazing past the Druid. Now, we're getting closer and closer to Maligos eventually playing the Maligos Rogue. Uh, and I would love so. to see him because we have yet to see him bust out his true power. In fact, the Maligos decks are the ones that remain. Yeah, I was just looking at it. Like, the two decks that he has remaining right now are the Maligos Rogue and the Maligos Druid. We have seen that. Uh, Druids really struggle in this uh, in this match. Both players still with uh, still trying to find their wins with those decks, but one of them will eventually. Yeah, you know, Druid these days um, just seems to overwhelm their opponents. However, on paper, they don't necessarily tend to look that favored on paper. Yep. They just have a lot of solid plays, very similar to Druid of the past. It's not like there's not there's not many matchups that are like 75, 25, similar to Freeze Major's Control Warrior, uh, but it's just generally very good at everything. Yeah. Uh, I would say that nowadays maybe the, the Malugos uh, version of the Druid does struggle with Warrior a tiny bit, but it's qu it's quite strong. And uh, let's see how it works out now. A Druid is going to get a win for one of these players. To get the starting hands, Innervate Queen Emperor might be something that's uh, very powerful, very wow. fast. But he needs to find something more to go with those, or the Emperor won't discount much. The Moonfire already being zero mana. Yeah, that was a super fast Raven Idol choice from Malagos. I didn't even get to see the other choices. <laughs> yeah. um, I guess it was pretty bad. Yeah, you mentioned the Emperor. That is a, a very, very powerful card, too. Oh, oh man. Starfire. It's okay, choices. I guess. It's, it's not great, but he might find a moment for it at some point to remove maybe his opponent's same better or uh, even an Azure trick. Here, Gundam Flame could coin innervate that trick, but uh, then he wouldn't have much to play on the, on the next turn, so I, I do like the decision to go for the coin innervate Torison on his turn three instead and then just play the the Drake when he's at four mana because of because he will be able to do so because of the discount that he gets from the Emperor. And <laughs> here's the tough thing too. Uh Maligos can't exactly remove the Emperor. <laughs> no, that is a disaster for Maligos right now. Oh like no. Emperor surviving a turn, but there is still a, a little bit of hope. He could pick up uh, something like Living Roots or 
even a, even a Moonfire would do it in combination with the Wrath and the Hero Power. But that is a punch also. Gundam Flame will have his uh, Emperor for another turn. Yeah, and this counting things wow. like, um, you know, Raven Idol to zero is already bad, but whatever ends up coming from those Raven Idols will be really devastating. That's right, and the Drake is also going to draw a card, so the new That's card will, will also get the discount. Oh man, the new Raven Idol too becomes zero. <laughs> oh, that giant's going to come out super fast. Let's see what he, what he gets from his idol. Some kind of healing effort would uh, be too bad. Oh, it gets the Norris. That is great news for a Gundam Flame. Going to be able to refill his hand. Uh, yeah. He will only have to pay four mana for it, too. This is looking uh, pretty one-sided so far. Uh, Maligos can clear the board through use of his second swipe here. Yep, and it's fine to use it because uh, there's no... Uh, whoa, okay. So okay. he's just going to go for the mana here. All right. Already going for the York Planner. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, it, it totally makes sense. His opponent's it's been able true. to draw cards. He feels really far behind. He senses that his opponent is going to be starting to build up the board a lot. So rather than just play super reactive and slow, try to get a little bit ahead on the mana and maybe use uh, Yogg's Ron, not necessarily just to win the game, but to climb back on the board and get momentum in your favor. Yeah, that's actually really good. Uh, his hand is so expensive, too, because of the Starfire pickup. So it does make a lot of sense to mm -hmm. get the mana there. Just take the additional board from the Drake. Oh man, that Nourish is so powerful, getting so many resources. And because his opponent played slow, he can also play slow. Yep. And cast the Wild Growth here for one mana. Mm, living Roots, uh, I would, yeah, just save it for the, for the Malagos. That's fine. Feral Rage, that is a great pickup for Malagos. So he's going to be able to not only remove that, but also gain the 8 armor from that. Uh, Great. Yes, and I think through this he's hoping his opponent plays extremely reactive, spends his entire turn removing, so that way he can continue to seize opportunity to play onto the board as Drake could lead it to other cards. Yep. <laughs> Another Norris for Gundam Flame. <laughs> he's gonna have yep. plays for days. At this stage you, you're not gonna go for a mana anymore, so probably gonna save that for a little bit. Uh, whatever he ends up doing this turn uh, is going to include the Arcane Giant for sure. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of options how to do it. Maybe brought for one, uh, like some kind of living roots thing. If there's no sign of Malagos yet, I'm not sure exactly like what uh, it would be the option here. Like brought living roots, mm -hmm. swipe. he swipes. He probably will just play the arcane no. giant with moonfire or or living roots. Yeah. So uh, obviously the moonfire. That's strictly better to use the moonfire in this situation because of the discount on that uh, living roots. Mm -hmm. So yeah, getting that giant down right now. Malagos uh, does not play any mulches, so if he wanted to remove that efficiently, he would have to pick up a mulch from a Raven Idol. Yeah, I'm, I'm also thinking about how big of a difference will Ragnaros make if he draws it compared to having that second Arcane Giant. Malagos only has one Arcane Giant in his deck. Wow. So, I mean, that's going to already put him at a little bit of awkward position because Arcane Giants being free in this matchup is such a powerful swing for tempo. Yeah, I don't really like that. Uh, Deck choice or uh, that uh, deck choice, if you if you wanna call it that. Um, I think that uh, Harrison Jones in his deck is kind of the card that kind of blocked out the second giant. But the giants are just so powerful. I, just, I don't know how you can uh, how you can <laughs> not play too. Yeah, it's pretty nutty, man. If you think about like how Wild Growth makes it too cheaper, mm -hmm. and then you play Emperor and make these things ridiculously cheap for yeah, zero mana. It's like Raven Idols, also like kind of like money yeah. in the bank. It's just a money in the bank. I like it. I'm gonna say that every time I play Raven Idols into giants. <laughs> Yeah, uh, play that with some flow rider music in the background. <laughs> Meyer Keeper just putting on the pressure here. There's no real rush for Gundam Flame. He can just keep stacking his lead. And there is also a very real thing that goes on the back of the minds of players in this matchup, which is you can also wait for your opponent to yog to play their Yogg's run, so you can play your Yogg's run into their Yogg's run. Yep. And then uh, hopefully time it so that way you come out favorably at the end. The other eight damage was quite huge that um, the Arcane Giant that dealt there before it was dealt with because oh there we go that's the Malagos Moonfire was used earlier so it's kind of hard to to uh, find a lot a lot of burst at this stage. Right, but it is possible. I, I do think that there's still uh, the second Moonfire somewhere. I actually don't mind playing to Mali go straight up on the board a lot of times in oh, this yeah. matchup too. Uh, Your opponent doesn't have mulch, and if he if he has 12 health, how is he going to well, really get through it? Now that you mention it, I mean, why why would he not play it? Almost like it's just uh, it's impossible to remove without the Yogg. Yogg is a is an, like a kind of a way to deal with it, but it's also very unreliable. Yeah. Here those card draws. He ended up with a very weak turn. 
Yeah, I think he is very much afraid of Yogg-Saron's impact yeah. on Maligos' side. He that, knows that yeah. if he plays Maligos, doesn't kill his opponent, and Yogg-Saron swings the board, he could lose I all think, momentum. I think that's it. He just wanted to like try to find that uh, the Moonfire and trying to mm -hmm. burst down his opponent. The Feral Rage, that I think he has to pick that up. He's down to 12 already. Oh, okay. he's going to for second Raven also. He's going to try to find something more. Oh, potentially make okay. Arcane Giants free. These guys are playing Giant. lightning fast. They really are. He also can play Moonfire to make this yeah. Arcane Giant free. It's a giant on the board. The okay, so a lot of stuff just happened, and uh, I'm trying to digest it all, but the big thing, big takeaway is that Gundam Flame is in an awkward spot. Yeah. That's <laughs> I mean, he does have Mulch, though, for this position, so he can Mulch and start removing. Yep, that's not going to be a better amount, and uh, I think he's winning by so much that he doesn't need to risk the yoke at this stage. He can just oh, like a yeah. mulch swipe uh, Wrath for cycle on this line. One Astral Communion's all it takes for you to just lose yeah. the game, period, on the spot. I think it's pretty terrible to, to yoke here. It's just so unnecessary. Um, I mean, if you mulch, you can also play Azure Drake and Wrath and remove everything on the board. Your Azure Drake That's will make true. Living Roots 3 damage and we can Wrath for 2 and then you can just mulch the the Giant and you have a 4-4 four four on the board plus you dug a little deeper in your deck. Yeah, I like that a lot, but uh, the way that he's been playing... Oh, oh he's gonna go boy! The, I, I don't know Here if we I like go. this for then. Oh! He's going for Savagery, Ice Bear. Okay, some secrets. Uh-oh. That's a little bit too much! I, I don't... I feel like that's so unnecessary. In and this he's situation. also almost out of time. Vanish! Oh, His Yogg's no. has died. He can't even get it back. Oh man, what just happened here? Okay, so he got. Th All right. Four back no. there. All right. Stop it, Yogg. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, well, he's saying that he has enough damage from the hand to kill his opponent next turn. Yeah, he did pick up that Moonfire now. Oh man. But uh, Ma this is Malikus' opportunity. He needs some. Uh, some oh, shield blocks man. and uh, Not like this. Iron Forge portals, maybe a healing wave on his own. He has to heal. Yep, you're right. Or potentially play enough secrets to stop his opponent from uh, killing him. Yep. Counter spells. Ice are good. block would kind of work for a while, and maybe yep. a couple of uh, avenging rods. <laughs> you just win the game. In Fury on Yaxaron. Oh! What? Oh my goodness, so the mirror entity won't trigger. But it still might not matter. Yeah, you're right. He has to heal or get an ice block. Or that Malagos is going to. Oh, is that game. it? Yeah, looks like Wait, it. We had to do a recap of the secrets. Uh, it was misdirection, uh, vaporize, and one more. <laughs> I'm sure which one it was. Yeah, I, didn't, oh, I never remember that he had the opportunity to pick the Feral Rage earlier. Yeah, he, he knows did. that his opponent was pressing for damage with a lot of cards. I, I don't really know that. He could have just went for like double leaving, leaving roots to, yeah. to remove it. Uh. Yeah, this this game had a lot of choices coming down all the way to uh, this Gundam Flame uh, lethal play. Like, how can you not pick the, the Feral Rage when you got 12 against the Malikos deck that has like full hand? And, yeah, just, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely in that camp. Uh, but what's done has been done, and despite the fact that Yogg-Saron did a lot of trolly stuff, play a lot of secrets, kill yeah. a lot of secrets, gave himself Wind Fury, Gundam Flame finds himself up three to two, one game away, going to the semifinals. Yep, uh, getting close to the to the finish here. Malagos struggling with his Malagos decks. Those Yogg-Saron, as, yeah. as uh, flashy as the flare was there, <laughs> it, it wasn't <laughs> it really the do anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I needed to get healing. You're absolutely right, and Gundam Flame. Uh, just needs to win one more, and he will be, as the sole Japanese representative, going to day number two. Now, Soviets and I were kind of talking about that other game, uh, the game that we just witnessed, uh, and I think another thing that we might have also uh, not been noticing is that may maybe Gundam Flame was worried about dying, and so he played Yogg-Saron, because when you're running out of time, usually that's also like a bad time to play Yogg-Saron, so you just have to make a different play, no. but I think he was also just concerned potentially of his opponent bursting him from it was the hand. Just, It was just so smooth with like all the all the stuff that he had in his hand. He mm -hmm. had the mulch for the giant, he had the swipe, he had the he right. cycle with the rod. That felt like it was the game plan that he was going for, keeping that living roots, trying to find the moon fire, and then he just like, okay, <laughs> let's <laughs> Here go. You go. <laughs> so uh, Gundam uh. Flame, uh, with one deck remaining, he needs to win with this Dragon Warrior, warrior and uh, Dragon Warrior, I have to say, it's it's a deck that we have seen some players uh, struggle with lately. Yeah, and it's not necessarily um, 
because Dragon Warrior is uh, a bad deck at all. It's, it's certainly not. But one of the interesting things is just how everyone's banning Shaman. That's actually one of the classes or decks that Dragon Warrior excels against. So it is interesting to me that Gundam Flame chose to ban the Shaman, but chose to bring Dragon Warrior. I guess he just really is fond of aggressive strategies, like he said in his interviews. Yeah, it's not a weak deck at all. Let's see how it works out here. Malikas with that two sinister strikes in his opening hand. That is terrible. Those, those cards are just not useful uh -oh. at all for the first uh, first a lot of turns. <laughs> Savit, I have a bad feeling about this. I, I, I know I love Miracle Rogue a lot. I love the Rogue oh, class. It's my favorite man. class in the game. <laughs> but it, if there's one thing that it universally struggles against, no matter what type of expansion or meta it is, it's aggressive strategies. And Dragon Warrior is one of the most aggressive strategies you'll ever see. Uh, one more five drop and he just might be out of this <laughs> tournament. <laughs> oh, I mean, he's got... Uh, he's got uh, some so things to do. so clunky right now. The, the coin from the Tomb Blitzer, however, is going to help out. Yeah. So he will be able to coin out either the Harrison Jones or the Azure Drake. Most likely Harrison bent to stop his opponent's aggression. All right, Gundam Flame. He said he said, talked about it in his interview, how much he likes to go face. Yep. No trades. Here we go. Face no attack? Ha face has stoned. There was a tavern brawl like that one. Time. Oh, this is huge if he if he does not do the attack because of the coin that Tumbleys is yes. going to provide for Malukas. So okay. that would be a coin Harrison. No, he can still do the coin Harrison, but it won't be as huge as it would have otherwise been. Yeah, and he's well aware that his opponent has um, Harrison as well. Okay. But uh, here, just gonna go for the Sinister Strike and keep his Doom Blitzer alive. Mm -hmm. I think that it's not worth the, the Harrison. Or, or he wants to just get the full clear in this situation. Yes. Gundam flame curving out so well. Weapon is also going to allow him to remove that. Ravaging Ghoul would let him uh, maybe go face with that weapon, but... Uh, I guess it's okay. It depends how highly he values his weapon. Yeah. But I, I, I would maybe like to drag a tiny bit more and just use his, uh, yes. use his weapon, but I, I can't blame him for the Ravaging Ghoul either. I think I like the Ash Drake a little bit better too. Yeah. It helps you just dig for a better play on turn six. Yeah, something like a spell, about, like a Drake's Drake backstep uh, uh, would be so smooth with dealing with this. If there was a Drake's Drake backstep on the Azure Drake, at least the dagger would also have to be used. Okay. Well, that backstab is going to be extremely necessary. Does not find it. Instead, picks up Mally. Goes Rogue's working with 11 wow. health. Yeah. That's <laughs> oh <laughs> Getting boy. so low. He's already at Ragnar's range. Ragnar's a couple of turns away, but I still like. Oh, face is the place. Going for. A the Corruptor on the face as well, putting his opponent down to five health already. Mm -hmm. and this early on in the game. Keep in mind, uh, Malikos doesn't run any heal in his Malikos deck. Yeah, so that five is is going to be all that he's gonna have for the rest of the game. Is the best. irony of the fact that Malikos is not gonna be able to find a win with any of his Mali decks <laughs> actually happening here, Savits? Yeah, I think that the renaming is something that he has to at least consider. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Curator drops onto the board, giving Gundam Flame more pressure as he finds his, his only beast, his only Murloc. That's and Finley. The Draconoid yeah. Crusher. But uh, right now, there is no guaranteed uh, face damage from Gundam Flame. And uh, okay. the, the board from Malukos is quite considerable. With those spell powers, he, has, he could uh, fan Shiv just to remove that. Uh, or he could just go for like a Shiv Barnes. Also, Sinister Strike, not too bad. It's draw first. Uh, okay. So just trying to maximize the damage that he yeah. has. I think I would like the maybe Barnes just straight in there for one. A tiny bit better, but this is also a, a very nice play. And a Gundam Flame, even with what he just has right now, with that Ragnaros, he's one in three to advance to the semifinals if he chooses to play Drag. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind it at all. Because, you know, the Azure Drakes are being really aggressive. Your opponent has a decent-sized yeah. hand. I'd be really afraid of Sap at this point. Ooh, oh, just going to go for the Finley. He wants a steady shot. Does he oh, get it? Oh, he gets yes, it. he gets it. So Malagos is, Malagos is now effectively on a three-turn block here. There's no way for him to stop the steady shot. Or to him. Even a taunt. Oh, this is getting rough. He needs uh, something like a Sap maybe to remove the... Oh, yeah. Oh, sap is good. But he says Sap, and he has an Emperor to go with this, so... Sad Emperor. Oh man, if he's like save the sinister strike from earlier. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but he had to use some way to enable the eviscerate for combo. Yeah, that's true. So it was a 
It was definitely the choice. It's got nine plus the three plus six is 18. Wait, what? Does he actually have, oh, he's 19 with the dagger? Hold on, but there's gonna be a taunt to stop the dagger. Oh, you're right. Oh, you're right. And if he has sap, he's gonna be one man off. Wow. Wait, but that's assuming Gun and Flame plays a taunt instead of tries to play Ragnaros in this position. So, so with the Drake and the Mulligan, Sinister no. Strike. That'd be 19 nine, damage. 9 damage, yeah. So, with, yeah, you're right. <laughs> That'd be 19 damage, exactly. So the last Zap would, uh, would do it if he goes with just the Drake hero bar. But he, he can play the Drake, yeah, exactly. Pierce Monkey, and hero bar. So he can play mm. two taunts. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, two taunts and hero power. Yeah. Ooh, so he's trying He's to not going to hero power this oh, turn? Oh, man. This is huge. This is, oh, he might actually lose the game because of the decision. He tried to find the quick lethal with another charger. This decision to yeah. play the Azure Drake right here might cost him the game. Oh, yeah, because now he gets another turn, potentially. That would be it. Does S agent do that? Not quite. Uh, no. No, he needed that. Uh, he needed that last tap. Okay, so he can... He can go fishing with Gadgets and Auctioneer as well to draw cards. Barnes doesn't have that many good things to hit anymore. It's got another yeah. SI7 agent. It's got like a Tomb Pillager, and those things aren't as useful right now. Yeah, he has to. I think he has to go drawing with the Auctioneer. The Malagos right now, it doesn't really do anything. So just playing an Auctioneer with the Sinister Strike, maybe use the SI to kind of like finish off the one of the minions. Okay. And he only has one spell, so yeah. the Sinister Strike is much as the burst with Malagos is great. You can't really afford it. Is he saving? He might be looking at saving it here. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Okay, right. I don't mind that Makes either. Sense. Yeah. yeah it's probably better than Gundam Flame's still looking for that Fire War Axe, that Gromish, that oh, Core Corn Elite, that Black Wing Corrupted. Yeah. He has one Alex Sars' champion, one Core Corn Elite, one Fire War Axe. And he gets a... Oh, no! That's not it. How did it come to this? Oh my goodness. Maybe he should have traded just a little bit more. No, <laughs> I, I think that the decision to Azure Drake last though, like that's it. Like he's getting punished for it so hard. Just playing the two taunts and hero powering. How do you lose from that position? What? How can you play no. the Drake? Well, okay, it's still not over. I mean, he still has a chance to win the game this turn if he chooses to go for it. Or he can play it safe through Ravaging Ghoul, defensive play, and hero power, which I would also highly recommend. But it's no longer guaranteed, and your opponent gets a free turn of, of Gadget and Auctioneer. That's right. Now he goes down to one health. I don't know. Ooh. Oh my goodness. And that, 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 that has to be like a way. It's like Sap. Oh, Shadow the Shadow Strike! He can remove the taunt with that. How much is... That's not quite enough yet. He's just one damage off? Two damage off? Is there still one damage He's off. one damage off. Backstab, Back just needs to draw another them. cycle. Does he find it? No, Another he's side from here. Deadly poison, potentially? Another backstab. He's backstabbing his own Malagos at this point. Oh, searching for that. He must have his freight, though. No, another preparation! The miracle is alive! No! Does not get the last damage right. Oh, my goodness. So close, but so far. Well played. Okay, Damn. BM, BM, Ragnaros and pass. <laughs> oh <laughs> my goodness. Ah, that was quite the roller coaster. And at the end of the ride, we have one Japanese representative going to the semifinals. Wow, <laughs> what an amazing uh, auction here, there. But in the end, it's just not quite good enough. Pretty cool series, I have to say. Ah, I mean, if there's one way to go out, it's by one health <laughs> and one card <laughs> deciding games. Really exciting stuff, and we do have a winner of that best of seven, four to two, as uh, Malagos needs a second to collect himself, uh, understandably so. That was really intense. If we take a look at the bracket here, just to sh update you guys of who's been tuning in very recently after that very entertaining series. We have Handsome Guy versus Gundam Flame. Handsome Guy on a tear, by the way. Can he continue his path to the finals tomorrow? We'll find out. That's actually kind of terrifying. If, if you are uh, the one to play handsome guys, that guy has been on fire lately. It's just yeah. doing so well in the previous season. Certainly, and we do have a few words with Gundam Flame, our winner. He's standing by with Raven. Thanks a lot, Frodan. So congratulations on a very tense end to that series. How were you feeling going into the series? Were you confident, and did you think you could take it quite easily, or was it a lot harder than you thought it would be? Well, it was easier than I thought it would be because like I thought his 
lineup is like more of a controlled deck compared to mine. So if I like if I as long as if I can beat his do and rogue, I thought I could win. Okay, and you are going to be playing Handsome Guy tomorrow. How do you feel like you're going to go against him? Do you, are you pretty confident, or you got to do a lot of research tonight and a lot of practice to prepare for it? Well, he's like the the best player in the Asia right now. So, well, I should be the underdog, but I'll just try my best and research a lot. Yeah, well, there's no problem with that at all. So, congratulations again.